Next, let's talk about MPI jobs. How to submit an MPI job to the cluster. As you may recall, MPI stands for Message Passing Interface. And here we're talking about launching a number of Unix tasks. Each task will run on its own CPU core. And then these cores can be distributed across multiple nodes on the cluster. So for example, if you launch a four processor MPI job, you're asking for four processors, and these can be distributed across four different nodes, or they can all end up on a single node on the cluster. In this case, we have in the picture, we actually have a distribution where you're asking for four cores, and then uh, these four cores are di distributed across three nodes. An MPI communication occurs via messages, not via shared memory like with OpenMP jobs, but via explicit messages sent from one processor to another. And MPI codes are more difficult to write than OpenMP codes because you are explicitly organizing communication between processors. But on the plus side, an MPI code can scale beyond a single node because the code itself does not care whether your processes are sitting on the same node or scattered across multiple nodes on the cluster. So this way your code can actually scale to a very large number of processes spanning multiple nodes on the cluster. Here is the slide showing how you submit an MPI job. So first of all, you have to compile the code with uh, one of the MPI commands, MPI CC, MPI capital CC for C++, or MPI Ford for a Fortran MPI code. Once you have an executable MPI, you can uh, start writing your job submission script. So here's an example. We're asking for, uh, we're asking for four processes, four MPI processes. And then the maximum runtime is five minutes, like in the previous examples. Memory per CPU is 100 megabytes. So this is not the total memory for the entire run, but this is the memory limit for each processor. And then uh, to actually run the code, we have to wrap it into a command, either MPI run or S run. So MPI run minus MP followed by the number of processes. And so this is another slow variable, slow number of tasks that's gonna be available to you uh, during the job execution inside the running job. And this value will be taken from, uh, from this uh, flag in slum, right? So this will be set to four. You're gonna say MPI run minus MP four, and then the name of the executable. The reason why you need to wrap your executable into this command is that with MPI, you're launching exactly the same copy of your code on each processor participating in the run. So in this case, we have four processes and on each processor, we're launching exactly the same code. And then this code talks to a similar code running on another processor via message passing interface. So uh, let's try to do this on the cluster. Here we have a distributed memory code, or an MPI code called distributed pi.c. And it's the same mathematical algorithm for computing pi, where we are calling MPI commands, message passing interface library commands. We initialize the MPI interface. Then we inquire about the current rank of uh, this processor, then the total number of processors, and then if rank is zero, then print this message. And then each processor will also print process its ID started. And then each processor will do this summation and it's only partial summation because we increment I not by one, but by the number of processes. So each processor will do its own partial sum. And then we multiply this partial sum by H and um, we are calling the MPI reduce command so we have all these partial sums, and then all of these sums are gonna be sent to processor zero, to this guy, and all these partial sums will be added together, and then the total sum will be written into this variable, and then if I'm rank zero, where I have this total variable, I'm gonna print it, and then I finalize my MPI communication. So let's compile and run this code. We already have the make file, so all we need to do is say, is say make MPI, and that will run this command underneath. So now we have the MPI executable, and then uh, let's open the uh, job submission script, job underscore MPI to the sage in nano. And here again, I'm gonna increase the default value 
of memory to 1000 megabytes. And then I'm asking for four processes and five minutes maximum runtime. And then uh, the executable itself is wrapped into this command. So optionally, you can replace this command that I highlighted on my screen with srun. And srun will also try to figure out the runtime environment, so the number of processes. But I find that in practice, mpi run minus mp followed by the explicit number of processes will be a little bit faster than srun. And this difference is more visible on the training cluster, which is, uh, which is very slow. So on the training cluster, I highly recommend to use MPI run as opposed to S run. So let me save this. Control X. Yes, save, confirm the file name. So here's my job submission script. And then I'm going to say S batch followed by the job submission script. So job ID seven, and it is currently running. So you can see the state is running. It's four seconds into the run. It's using four processes. And these four processes are distributed across two nodes. And you can actually see which nodes, nodes one and two. And because on the training cluster, each node has two processes, I'm fully using uh, these two nodes, nodes one and two, each one uh, has two processes. So let's wait for our job to finish. It is still running. And now it has finished. The output should go into the file slum dash the job ID, so 7.out. And here's the output from the code. So the process is zero, was printing calculating pi with uh, so many processes. And then each process has printed this message, its ID. And then we have the output from process zero once the all the partial sums were computed and uh, the total sum was computed as well. So we're printing the total sum and the error.